Hi everybody. Um, it's kind of an exciting day today. I think um, today officially marks the real beginning of the process of me building my wood kiln. Um, I've been kind of experimenting here and there for the last couple months, but um, I have some conclusive results that I'm going to share and um, I think it's time to start. So um, I'll probably just go ahead and explain what is going into all of this. So I've, I've wanted to build a catenary arch cross draft um, brewery box wood kiln for a while. Um, I'll probably do some salt and soda firing in it. Um, that's an aesthetic that I really enjoy. And um, I haven't been able to do that yet in, in other kilns and in other places. Um, so I've decided to build my own. It's an expensive endeavor though. And um, I've been looking around for fire bricks, I've been looking for used bricks, I've been looking for new bricks, and pretty much the cheapest that I can find is um, somewhere in the $2.75 range, and those aren't even really ideally suited for my purpose. That's just way expensive. Um, I can't afford that for the number of bricks I need. So um, I've decided to make my own. So I'll kind of talk a little bit about the process of um, doing that, the tests that I've gone through, um, and what my conclusions are, and the recipe. So um, all of the tests pretty much I'm about to show you are tests that I have already done probably about a year ago with um, Hawthorne Fire Clay. Um, Hawthorne Fire Clay is far more expensive. It actually works very well, but it's prohibitively expensive. So. Um, this brick right here, I'll put that in the camera here, um, this is made, all of these have a corner broken off of them because I was chipping into them to see what they look like on the inside to see whether, you know, how vitreous they are and such. Um, these came out of the kiln the day before yesterday. This one is made out of some refractory material that I got from a local brickyard. Um, and, uh, I'm actually kind of bummed about this one because... It's the perfect material. It works really, really well. As you can see, this was fired to cone 11. Well, you can't see that, but I'm telling you. Um, these were fired to cone 11. And, uh, I mean, it behaves kind of like bisquare. It's not vitreous. It's not particularly hard either, but this would be well suited to my purpose. Um, but unfortunately, they said that they would not be willing to stop their production and grind this material for me. It comes basically as a stone, and it has to be hammer milled before it can be made into a brick. And they were not willing to do that for me, even though I was going to get upwards of 5,000 pounds, it wasn't worth them worth it for them. And I don't blame them one bit. I mean, I understand that it's expensive to shut down the production line of a whole factory to, you know, it's, that's quite a, um, a thing to do as a favor for someone, <laughs> essentially. So I don't blame them one bit for that, but it's kind of a bummer because that would have been ideal. Um, but in the meantime, I have been experimenting with using Wilco Kalen, um, which is a brand of Kalen that's available to me here in Denver, Colorado, and um, a mixture of Wilco Kalen and masonry sand. Um, masonry sand in this area where it's mined, it's primarily primarily silica sand, um, and so it works very well for this kind of thing. Um, this brick here, you can see there's some markings scratched into it um, that you probably can't read, but I can. Uh, this says 20% sand, so this is 80% Wilco Kalen, 20% sand. Um, it makes a lot of brick. Um, this one is 30% sand. It also makes a good brick. I know these all look very ugly. Um, but they don't need to be pretty. Um, I'll probably try to make them a little bit nicer than this, but they don't really need to be beautiful. They just have to function. Um, and a lot of this discoloration and kind of bubbliness on the outside is because of the sand that I used as a mold release. Um, if you actually look at the inside structure of the brick, it's not nearly that, like, molten or, or vitreous. In fact, you can just kind of chip away at it with a metal implement, and it kind of... Uh, Kind of chips off. It's it's more than bisked uh, in terms of vitreousness, but it's not it's not fully vitreous, which is which is good. I don't I don't want that. Um, so this is a thirty percent one. Um, let's see. This is a 
this one contains 40% sand, um, and I think that this is still a viable recipe. Um, this one here contains 50% sand, and although it appears to make a, a decent brick, um, for some reason I seem, I don't know exactly what actual physical characteristics lead me to believe this, but I think that there seems to be a little bit of a reduction in quality as I get past the 40% um, sand ratio. So I'm going to not go as far as 50% with the sand. Um, and this is kind of an interesting test. This brick, you can't tell this by looking at the camera, but this weighs less than half as much as the other ones. This is an insulating fire brick that I made. This is 50% um, by, all these measurements are by volume, not by weight. Um, because they're going to be the most, volume is going to be the most practical way of measuring quantities when making such large amounts of material. I don't want to be weighing everything with like a bathroom scale or whatever. Um, this one is an insulating brick made of 50% sawdust and 50% little cocaine. And as you can see, it behaves much like an insulating fire brick. Um, it's, it's about what I need for the exterior insulating liner or the insulating layer of the kiln. Um, so pretty much the recipes that I'm going to be going with are these two bricks here. The 40% sand, 60% Wilco Kaolin, and the 50% sand, 50% sawdust for the insulating bricks. Um, I added 5% Portland cement to each one of these recipes. I decided later on, the, the rationale behind that was that after forming the bricks, even if they're not dry, the bricks will achieve a chemical set from the, from the Portland cement and they'll be stackable. Um, which was appealing, thinking that I was going to be working on this over the fall or the winter, and they would be drying very, very slowly. But it's extremely hot right now. It's still summer. And because these dry to a stackable consistency within about a day or so in the sun, I'm really not too terribly worried about having to add cement to them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nix that from the ingredient list, if anything, that will improve them. I don't think that'll be of any detriment to their to their ability to hold up at high temperatures. So that's these. Here is the um, kind of janky brick mold I was using before. It's just a couple pieces of one by three nailed together, um, and this was not the best. I found as I was throwing the brick um, clay into it, the mold would come apart. So I replaced this one with this one, which is the same internal size, but of much sturdier construction. It's screwed together with stainless screws. Um, it's been somewhat sanded and planed. It's dimensionally accurate, so this is going to be my mold from now on. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to probably make a batch of, I'd say probably between 40 and 60 of these bricks as my first kind of production patch. I'm still making minor changes, um, mainly that I was using masonry sand to make these bricks, which it probably doesn't make a huge difference, but I see some small little iron specks and some impurities in that sand, and I'm deciding to um, switch out the masonry sand for plaster sand, which should be a pure um, variety of sand and also a slightly finer grade. So that's really the only change I'm making. Um, I picked up some plaster sand the other day. So I'll probably see you folks in just a bit when I have the clay mixing and brick making station set up outside. All right, so I've got two buckets of uh, Wilco Kaolin and I've got two buckets of plaster sand that are not quite full. So that's that 40, 60 ratio right there. I'm going to mix this all up together dry and then I'm going to add water to it. I'm going to do that on this sheet of plywood and then I'll probably um, tread it with my feet in order to mix it because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get it all done with that grub hoe. We'll see. So I'll bring the hose over here and uh, do that. To uh, show the brick making process. So first I wet the brick mold. And then I 
take the, this is fine silica sand that I use to release. I get it all over the inside of the mold. The mold goes down on the plywood, and then I scoop myself a chunk that's about enough for a brick, and I roll it through the silica sand to get the release on the outside of the ball, and then I slot the brick, scoop off the excess, and then I have a drywall knife here that I just wet. And I drag it over the top to get rid of the excess. And then I pull the mold off. And that's the process. Roll a clod. And sometimes doesn't want to stick because it's got too much silica sand from the last time around in between like the attachment pods. So I just fix that first and then 